Hey, I think you're going to be really surprised the overlap between RPA and test automation and how you can use existing tools that you may know like Robot Framework to help you with RPA as well. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also smash that bell down below to get alerted every time I release a new automation video. I recognize that RPA was on the technical level really similar to test automation. So in, in RPA, you, you try to automate a, an application to perform business tasks. And in test automation, well, you automate apps to, you know, validate them. So, so the, the things that these automation systems do at the end of the day for, for applications is really, really similar. The, the, the goal is a bit different, you know, where, where it lives inside of an organization might be different and how you control, manage and monitor and orchestrate that is a bit different, but Really, the fundamental thing about what you want to achieve is is it looks the same for an engineer. So, so I got really, really curious when I saw RPA for the first time. That got me started. So, you know, background in Robo Framework uh, was the perfect starting point to to explore RPA. And what I couldn't find in RPA was that there wasn't any open source in there. So somebody coming from an open source software development background, it just felt you know wrong to me in a way that you know open source being the you know biggest enabler of software productivity over the last 30, 40 decades. So why don't we have this that in this you know growing and exp vastly expanding uh, space called RPA? When I first saw RPA. Uh, I started exploring the technology and kind of took the claims at face value as, you know, look what the vendors were saying. Hey, this is a drag and drop tool. It's so easy and simple that your accountant is able to automate away their tasks. And, and um, you know, I, I thought that these guys have really figured out something that we can have, you know, come up with on the open source space in, in test automation. Like, have they finally cracked the, you know, the, the challenge of, of making non-technical folks being able to automate? And uh, I, I started digging in and I started, you know, meeting people who were doing RPMs. Like, I, I never could actually find an instance where a sort of non-technical person would have successfully automated anything with vendor-based RPA tools. So it kind of struck me at that time that, hey, this isn't, you know, any different than, than test automation. You, you have this, this persona of an automation developer, an RPA developer, test automation developer, the, the automation engineer comes in and solves these, these uh, automation tasks. And they are really, really similar to test automation uh, at the end of the day. RPA might have longer running tasks, but, the, but, you know, the, the thing that you build as an automation engineer there is, is really the same. But let's start with RPA basics. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of different types of automation in, in, in business processes. There's workflow automation, like tools like Zapier, et cetera. They're not RPA. Um, you know, RPA is about robotic process automation. So the robot is the key here. Robot meaning an agent. We call them bots. The bot is the key thing. So it's about building these automations that can act as a human user would on any IT system out there to perform tasks or on that particular system. So, so think about something like, you know, typically you start with tasks in, in RPA that, that were previously done by human employees. So something like, um, entering orders into an ERP system, you know, they come through an email, you know, you pick it up, you maybe you know, read, read a document, then get the data off of that document and then enter that into an ERP system. So you could build a bot that can like log into that ERP system with their own credentials and and start using the UI to to punch in that uh, that that data. You know, you might do something like uh, month end reporting where you used to have people having to go into financial systems like accounting systems and extract uh, report after report and consolidate them and validate them and 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 send them to their auditors, et cetera. And now you have bots to do that. So the key differentiator in RPA is that, is that uh, ability to run an automation with your user's credentials on a specific environment at a specific time based on a specific trigger. And, and you might oftentimes have like internal business applications that require you to be running inside of a company's network to be able to access that. And, and if you, if you kind of compare it to test automation, then, uh, you're working with live systems. So you don't have your, your test environment. You can't do like, you know, various setup and tear down stages. You, you need to actually be able to work on live systems and, um, and 
if something goes wrong, you don't just fail. So that's that's kind of the the easy part in test automation. You you try to make it fail, but in RP, try your best not to fail on anything, and you you build in a lot of error handling in in these steps. Um, so that makes it really really different from from kind of the development perspective. Then the orchestration systems themselves, they look a bit different. So in RPA, you have a concept of the orchestrator. We call it the control room. And that's essentially, um, you know, really job specific Jenkins, if you wish, or, or CI server. Um, that's, that's a system that can run those bots in, in production, deploy them where they need to run, uh, monitor them, maintain and collect reporting and analytics. So that's kind of in a, in a nutshell, uh, what the difference is. But they are the same kind of reasons that you see in test automation. So, you know, try to do record and playback. And it doesn't really work out. Not really like making wild claims about the record and playback capabilities, but it's all the same story again that we've seen before. So what you need to be able to do in, in RPA to make it reliable is, is to build it on essentially like event based, don't do static weights and these kind of things. Just, you know, the basic principles. With, with Robocop, how we approach it, we, we have a concept of, you know, the best path automation. So, so we use Robo framework as, as the underlying technology because that allows you to uh, access the application in question on, on, you know, multiple levels. You can, you can obviously interact with the, the visual layer itself, like to image based, uh, automation, just like, you know, matching screen regions that's that's really the most fragile way to do it um then you can do you know go into locators like ui elements etc et you can go into apis you can go into all, all the way to the data layer itself into database access so you can mix and match these different modalities of accessing the application and always find the best path for that particular automation the same way as you 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 would approach let's say you know uh test automation where you want to modify the application through the UI and then validate it against the, the database. And, you know, same here applies, but you know, in a kind of a different way where you, you, you know, might do one action on the UI, but if you, if you have more robust way to perform that through the database, you go ahead and do that. So, so that's, that's a really an antidote to the, the brittleness and the flakiness. In, in RPA, we talk about two different kinds of bots. So you have attended bots that run on, on your users desktop and, and do stuff there. Uh, then you have unattended bots, which run in the, in the back office and completely autonomously you know, perform tasks. So with the unattended stuff, you, you would typically also kind of want to validate your actions af after the fact, um, you know, make sure that they are done the correct way. Uh, not everyone will do that. Um, so, so, you know, that, that's a good point to maybe raise while, while you are performing up it, if you complete a business transaction, make sure that that's, that's actually completed. Uh, but in the attended automation case where you have the, uh, you know, the human user watching the bot do its thing, there you, you'll typically just leave the final commit stage out and let the human confirm that action that, that the bot has done. We have some numbers that, that tell us that 11 out of 12 RPA projects fail to scale beyond simple POCs proof of concepts, but the, the projects that we see scaling to you know, use dozens or even hundreds of, in some cases, thousands of bots in production, they've always um, organized the, the RPA function through something called in the industry as COE, Center of Excellence. So you know, fancy way of saying an, an RPA team. Uh, so, so we have these RPA developers there like who, who do this day in, day out and, and build these bots and then, then maintain them. And, uh, they might have RPA business analyst roles who, who collect the, the requirements, uh, from the business users on, on these tasks, identify opportunities, etc. Uh, again, something of an, um, uh, of an RPA uh, jargon term would be PDD. So process definition document. This is a document that you, it's essentially a spec that tells you what the bot should do, what the process in question is. So your analyst might collect the PDD, then your, your COE developer might implement that bot and, and then run and maintain that. Um, then you have a concept called the citizen developer. Now, now, I mean, I actually feel a bit funny talking to, uh, test engineers about RPA because I'm explaining this, these, all these terms that are kind of, 
uh, RPA specific, although they they might be um, familiar in in different contexts. But but the citizen developer is now uh, somebody who who is sort of a less technical persona building out automations, and and this uh, this is really a persona where that you target with this low code drag and drop type of tools, and then. The theory is that a citizen developer with the support of the COE could produce automations. Um, you know, that model is is still, you know, juries out there to, to be really able to say if if we see um, citizen developer led efforts that are actually going to produce value. We take the approach that, that we really focus on the automation developers. So RPA developer needs to be a really um, sort of, um, you know, Track of many trades in a, in a way that you need to understand how how IT systems work. You need to understand a bit about APIs, a bit bit about databases. Oftentimes, you need to be this kind of forensic developer who's who's who reverse engineer some some applications that might be like ancient and 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 really janky. Uh, you know, going into mainframe systems and automating them and so forth. So you need kind of like this broad skill set. You don't necessarily need to go super deep on any area, but you need to know a lot about you know a lot of things. Um, you know, with working with something like um, a Robo framework. Uh, obviously, Python is a is a good background skill, but we we come to realize that you know there's you know a shortage of people who have this kind of perfect skill set, but there are a lot of people who want to get into this space. So upskilling into something like Robo Framework and, and Python. What I what I tell you is uh, what you don't want to do with RPA. Oftentimes, you see people wanting to apply it to this like tiny, tiny fragments of, of tasks, like, you know, I need to fetch this thing from my email inbox and it's annoying. Um, but that's typically not where you will get, you know, a lot of benefit out of RPA. Look at where, where if you're working in an organization, like where are people spending their time on, you know, go and ask around, you might, you know, make friends with your financial controllers, you might find that they're actually spending their time on, on really grinding routine tasks that you didn't even realize that exist. So there's usually the biggest opportunities for RPA uh, instead of like looking at your own desktop.